Hey everybody, it's Michael coming to you. Hope you had a great weekend, and uh, just wanted to send, make a quick video for you today. Talk through some uh, some of the stuff that we've been learning uh, in the past couple of modules, and also give you a bit of a preview to what's next. Um, hope you'll excuse me today. I've uh, been a little bit uh, off the radar this past weekend because I was. Uh, uh, not only had a very busy weekend, but I've also been battling this really awful persistent illness that I think is just going around the State College area. Everybody seems to have it, uh, and it's not going anywhere anytime fast. So I have my secret weapon today. I've got, um, I've got Turkish candies that are, are like they double as throat lozenges almost, so it's, it's really kind of nice. They're made out of rose petals, so they have this really unusual and unique flavor. But we just had a visiting scholar from Turkey visiting us, and um, these are really coming in handy very nicely, so highly recommend them if you can find rose petal um, candies. They're uh, quite good for you, it seems, so it's great. But um, anyway, I hope you're all staying well and uh, also enjoying the material so far. Um, just one note, I wanted to let you know about grades. I have a lot of the stuff graded uh, from the past several modules, and I'm sorry they haven't been posted yet. The biggest obstacle is getting them actually physically in the grade book, and it's tricky too because these first couple of uh, uh, of modules, there's a lot of like specific nitpicky little numbers that we got to go through, and you know make sure all the math works, and there's a lot of different assignments to check. So it takes a little bit longer for me to grade them um, as we get into uh, you know some of the more uh, contextual work um, throughout. The, uh, the the remainder of the course, uh, that process should go a little bit faster, so we'll get grades back to you uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, the good news is I should hopefully have everything uh, in the grade book. I'd love to have it done tomorrow, honestly, by the end of the day, uh, so uh, I'm going to work hard to get as many grades in by then as I possibly can and uh, get them out to you So uh, uh, with some good feedback as well. Speaking of feedback, I really like where uh, the discussions are going online with weekly journal articles and entries. Um, great work. I know Yetkin has been working with you uh, uh, to give you feedback on those as much as possible, and I'll chime in from time to time on those as well. Um, and I have been uh, watching those and uh, really impressed with where they're going. I think a lot of you are coming up with um, excellent topics, uh, really great ideas, and, and I can see that you're starting to flesh them out and see how these things interconnect, which is really important. Um, yeah, I, I think as you're going through and, and doing your weekly journal entries, if there's one sort of constructive feedback I could give is that, you know, make sure when you post your journal entries that you're, you're not only summarizing the article, um, but that you're really kind of thinking beyond those concepts as well. So, you know, while you, you, you maybe tell me a little bit about what you think, and not just what you think about the article, but also how you think it connects and relates to your broader topic and or to the course. You know, it doesn't have to be, I'm not looking for anything really ultra specific here. I just like to see, you know, um, if you just tell me, well, this was a good article and I thought it really covered these issues well and I thought it was, you know, it was nicely done. Well, that's great, but I'd like to know a little bit more about how this really connects with what you care about and why you find this article to be particularly useful. So uh, the more you can tell me about that kind of stuff, how you're actually putting together your final paper and thinking about these articles in that context, mm, that's great. Definitely give me as much of that as you can. I'd love to see uh, love to see more. Overall, though, I've been really pleased with how that's going, uh, how the journal articles are going, and uh, um, everybody's been uh, doing a great job at staying on top of those. So hey, keep up the good work. Um, going forward, you just got done putting together a whole bunch of population stuff in a presentation for Module 5. That's great. This is really exciting because this is where we actually start to behave in a way like actual community development professionals. If we're going to go out into the field and, and start to talk about these issues um, uh, and try to convince people that there's a, a good way to move forward given the issues that they're facing, guess what? It's going to take a lot of convincing presentation. It's going to take getting feedback from your peers and understanding wh where the strengths and weaknesses are. And honestly, your peers should be asking, asking themselves, you know, would this presentation convince me? Would it give me a good sense of what this community is really like if maybe I don't understand what's going on? Or if I do understand what's going on, is it going to tell me something new and novel that maybe I haven't been thinking about? Um, you know, so as, as, as we kind of continue on through the class, uh, definitely uh, keep in mind that, you know, Someday you're going to be doing this quite, quite possibly for groups that are trying to develop their communities and make their communities stronger. Try to convince them. Try to convince them meaningfully that you know these data that you're presenting really matter, 
And uh, if you can do so in the most professional way possible, it's only going to earn you uh, points in terms of what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, because people will go away walking away saying, you know, this wasn't like a lot of other presentations I've seen. It was well done. It was clear. Um, it had good data. It was rigorous. And it was also very compelling as well. Um, you know, this is something to really keep in mind as we do our assignments. To, you know, write them as if you're presenting them to a client extremely powerful stuff and it puts you in a different frame of mind sometimes to think okay how might somebody that I'm trying to persuade perceive my work well this is great now going forward uh, we've got uh, sort of the population stuff that we've been working on but we're going to kind of bridge over to um, another area of development that deals with municipal finance and while finance and population may seem like two very separate concepts that kind of follow different rules, you know, we're going to talk about budgeting and we're going to talk about how, you know, how we plan for financial management and whatnot and some of the basics of municipal finance and local finance. But you better believe, just like every other topic in this class, that they are indeed related, heavily interrelated. Think about it from just a tax perspective. If you have a growing population, what's going to happen to your tax base? A shrinking population, what's going to happen to your tax base then? Will it constrain or enhance what you're really trying to accomplish in a community? This is where a lot of communities get into trouble because if you have a shrinking tax base, you want to attract more people to the town. But to do that, it sometimes takes more investment with money that you don't have. This is when you really need to get creative about the strategies that you use in order to try to attract people to your community. So you can bring that tax base up and have more options in terms of what you can produce for, uh, for the citizens that you're trying to serve. It's really, uh, I think that's a really important point. Also, the nature of municipal finance uh, really uh, uh, changes along with the types of populations that are there. So, for example, is your population primarily residential, like you're, we're talking about a bedroom community? How might their financial strategies differ um, from an area that's very commercial and takes in a lot of business taxes? Well, remember, there's a different there's essentially a different burden on each of these kinds of communities. So if you have a bedroom community, certainly there's going to be a lot of pressure for um, services like police and fire and, and health and hospital and whatnot. And, and of course, the big one, schools. Schools are very, very, very expensive. And while they're partially subsidized by state funding sometimes, sometimes they're not, you know, not, not as much or not sufficiently, I should say. So it puts a big burden on the people that are living there. The age of people in, that, in those communities too, whether they're paying taxes and what they require from their services, is very important to consider when you think about the whole financial uh, situation facing a community. Whereas businesses, you know, they might also need police and fire, but they're also putting out a lot of taxes. They're not necessarily requiring uh, expensive services in return, like, like uh, uh, grade school education, for example. So these are all things to think about going forward. Depending on who is in your community and what's happening with those populations, it's going to affect your financial bottom line and that's very important to consider. We'll talk more about it over the next couple of modules. I just wanted to say hello. Haven't made you a video in a while. It's good to be back. I'm going to keep getting better. I hope you're all staying well too and staying healthy and enjoying the class. Uh, if there's any way I can help you, please let me know how. Uh, I'll be here. Just send me an email and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care now.